Good evening, everyone. Evan Donovan live at the Florida State Prison in Rayford, Florida, uh, near the Union Correctional Facility. I've just uh, left the execution of Bobby Joe Long. He is officially dead. Time of death is 6.55 p.m. I want to wait for some of you to join here so that we can share our, our experience here about what happened. There were about 26 people there were exactly 26 people in that room, not including Department of Corrections facility, as well as Long's attorney uh, and a spiritual advisor were also inside the room. Again, if you are just joining us right now, infamous Tampa Bay serial killer Bobby Joe Long is dead. The official time of death was 6.55 p.m. There were nine members of the media, both print and television and radio reporters inside the room and you can see some of them behind me now gathered in this tent. We are awaiting some of the victims' families to join us here and share their thoughts. Again, there were 26 witnesses inside the room what the Department of Corrections terms official witnesses and nine members of the media who were also inside there. It was a very quiet uh, event. Uh, there were not many words, if any, spoken inside the room from the people who were watching the death. As you walked inside this very small room inside the prison, it was cramped. There were four rows with about 10 seats in every row, filling up the entire small room about eight feet tall and maybe only about 10 to 12 feet long and about 20 feet wide. When we first walked in, the curtain was down on the glass in front of us. After we'd been there seated for a few minutes, the curtain rose. You could see three men with the Department of Corrections who were inside the facility, or excuse me, inside the, uh, the tiny room. Sorry, I realize that I'm in a shadow here. <clears throat> when the curtain came up, you could see those three men, as well as uh, Bobby Joe Long, who was lying prostrate on the bed directly in front of us, his feet pointed towards us, his head further away. He was already connected to the IV when we walked into the room. This was uh, approximately 6.40 p.m. After a few moments, he was asked by one of the departments, uh, Department of Corrections officers whether he had any final words. And with a very soft voice he simply said no at that point one of the department of corrections officials said that the preparation phase of the execution was over and that the execution would begin it was at that point uh, that they made a motion and uh, what i assumed to be the drugs began to pour into bobby joe long's body Again, he was already connected to the IV when we walked in there. And just to catch some of you up, uh, Bobby Joe Long's execution is complete. He is dead. It took about 10 to 12 minutes from start to finish once they began. <clears throat> I have some notes here that I'll begin to read from uh, that I just wanted to check for you. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask them. Um, <clears throat> He was on death row since 1985, so 34 years. That does not make him the longest serving member of uh, Florida's death row. The, there were certain families in the room that we recognized from previous coverage of the event, uh, of, of, of him being in jail, of uh, the death warrant being signed a month ago, multiple court cases as well. Lula Williams, whose daughter Chanel Williams was one of the victims of Bobby Joe Long was in the room with her brother Eugene. Lisa McVeigh Noland, who was the, the survivor of a horrific 24 hour abduction and rape, who remembered a ton of details from her incident and was able to help investigators catch Bobby Joe Long, was also in the room with two gentlemen. There were no words spoken inside that room. Lula Williams, Chanel's mom, was crying uh, in, in the front row, bent over at times. There was a woman in the third row who passed her tissues and uh, tried to console her. 
there was very little movement once the drugs began. Uh, Bobby Joe Long had some slight twitching uh, as the drugs began to take effect um, from covering the court case and Bobby Joe Long's attorney's challenges to the death penalty, specifically the first drug used in Florida's lethal injection protocol, Etomidate, which is meant to be an anesthetic uh, that is supposed to effectively make him unconscious. Um, uh, forgive me for a second here, folks. I'm gonna try to get you back to the truck where I can get closer to um, <clears throat> my Wi-Fi card. I can see on the screen here that the video is lagging. Again, we are here at the media staging area who are supposed to be joining us shortly to share their thoughts about the execution with us. If you are just joining, uh, Bobby Joe Long has been executed. Uh, it happened at 6.55 in this afternoon. Um, I apologize again uh, with, the, uh, with the video breaking up there, folks. <clears throat> For those of you who are commenting about, um, about the broadcast, I'm not at all trying to make this dramatic. I'm uh, trying to accurately tell you what was happening inside of the room. And, uh, and certainly give it the respect it deserved for watching a man die. There were certainly people inside that room uh, who, were, who were pleased. open his mouth and take very deliberate breaths in and out as this was happening. Uh, but other than that, there was not much reaction at all. It was very subtle. Uh, he was very settled and um, all of the people inside the room were quiet and watching intently uh, through, this, through this window. About seven minutes, uh, five to seven minutes after the injections began, uh, you could see one of the men in the room check to make sure that he was unconscious. Uh, and that's when, uh, based on, again, the lethal injection protocol, we know the second and third round of drugs were put inside his body. At, at one point, at about 6.54, a woman emerged from a, a curtain behind where Bobby Joe Long was lying, shined a light into his eyes, which were closed at the time, uh, then used her stethoscope to check his breathing on his chest. And uh, after that happened, um, she then checked his, his carotid arteries for a pulse. He was not breathing and they declared the time of death at 6.55 p.m. The entire incident was very clinical. Uh, there were no hiccups. There was nothing really to report that was out of the ordinary that seemed as though it should not have happened. <clears throat> um, we're going to have obviously much more for you later on tonight on News Channel 8. We are awaiting victims and uh, survivors uh, who are going to be joining us at this media tent to share their thoughts on what happened in here. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, 34 years is how long he was on death row. That's correct, since 1985. Um, Deborah is asking how I'm handling watching. This is part of my job. So I was there just watching what was happening. Uh, it's uh, certainly not anything that was gleeful, but this was the sentence that he was, uh, he was given and they carried it out effectively. Uh, Rosemary, he is dead. 6.55 was the time of death. We do have two WFLA feeds on and I apologize uh, if there was any confusion. Uh, my photographer is over here waiting for those witnesses to come. I wanted to make sure that we could get you here uh, just in case there was uh, anything that happened over there. We wouldn't 
we wouldn't miss it. Uh, we will be over there in just a moment as soon as uh, any of the survivors or, or victims' families show up uh, to give us any statements. For right now, I think I'm gonna say goodbye. There's uh, um, uh, Naomi, sorry, is asking what was Lisa's reaction, what, Michelle asking what was Lisa's demeanor. Lisa was seated, was, excuse me, seated in the front row next to the wall. Uh, she didn't have much of a reaction. Um, she watched intently as everyone else in the room did, but she wasn't crying that I saw at any point. Uh, she was simply watching what was happening. Again, the entire incident was very clinical um, and uh, it happened very quickly and, and without incident. We're gonna say goodbye for now until we can uh, show you some more of the reaction from, uh, from some of the survivors and the victims' families. And again, join us later tonight on WFLA News Channel 8 at 11. We'll have much more there. If you wanna follow right now online at WFLA.com, I have a a blog there with live updates where I'll be updating what the minute by minute was inside the room. We didn't have any access to devices, so I was not able to update what was happening. Um, but I will be doing that very shortly here. You can also see on WFLA.com uh, a long five minute piece uh, kind of going over the case and exactly what happened to Bobby Joe Long, what he did to, uh, to many, many victims in the Tampa Bay area in the late 70s and early 80s, not just the 10 women that he raped and killed, but the dozens of others that he raped. Um, Connie, you're asking what his last meal was. We learned that earlier today. Uh, he had uh, roast beef with bacon and fries as well as a soda. It looks like some uh, vans are showing up now, so if you want to switch over to